Good morning. It's Sunday, May the 3rd. We're reading through the Bible in a year. Our Old Testament reading for today is 1 Kings chapters 6 and 7. The construction of the temple is underway. We saw in chapter 5 the building materials being gathered, and now Solomon is beginning the construction. At least he's directing it. And it says, interesting, early in the chapter, it's to be a quiet affair. You were supposed to get these uh, stones quarried in a particular place, bring them in. I mean, even the decorum of how it was built was a reverential act. It was an act of worship. And it was so opulent. You can see that in the way it's described. Matter of fact, it'll be years later, like 600 years later, that... Uh, they rebuild the temple after the destruction of Nebuchadnezzar. And the people that saw this building that Solomon made and also saw Zerubbabel's building, who lived through that 70-year exile, they wept because Zerubbabel, though they had put a lot of time and effort into it, did not build it anywhere close to what Solomon is building it to be. The specs here are amazing. Uh, they would be outdone by Herod in New Testament times, but this is a uh, just a, an incredible undertaking. And again, back to David's peacetime uh, or uh, providing peacetime through his military efforts is allowing his son Solomon with all the wealth to be able to build this temple. He also then in chapter 7 builds his own palace, which of course is also elaborate and opulent uh, in part to reflect the authority, as we'll see in tomorrow's reading, of the uh, position of the king in Israel. And it's appropriate, it's a reflection of his position as the monarch of Israel. So that's 1 Kings 6 and 7. In our New Testament, we're in Luke chapter 23, verses 27 through 38. Jesus is crucified here in the middle of it all. You can imagine the excruciating pain. He says to the people as he's marching by, he says, listen, don't weep for me, weep for yourselves. It's just an amazing thought that here he is bearing the sins of the world and recognizing that for those who do not trust him, the fear and the dread of facing God's judgment themselves uh, is something that they ought to be concerned about. And so that's just a sobering statement early in this reading today, verses 27 through 38. He also has that very famous statement when he says, Father, forgive them for they don't know what they're doing. Clearly they're culpable for their sin of executing Christ, but they don't know the full extent of what they're doing. And Jesus recognized that the, the magnitude of this uh, sacrifice is so big that he wants them to, uh, uh, God to see that in context. The Father, of course he does, but uh, there's that great statement of intercession. And the inscription over his head, as was the custom in a crucifixion, uh, the charge was over his head. Well, they didn't have a charge because Pilate, Herod, they didn't have any means or any, any grounds to, to crucify him. So it simply said, King of the Jews, uh, in the languages there over his head. So uh, interesting, because that is exactly what he was, the King of Jews, not only the King of the Jews, but the King of the world. So we're continuing now in 1 Thessalonians chapter 5, verse 13. Uh, and in that passage, it says we are to be at peace among yourselves. So there's our exhortation for our community today, what we as Christians ought to be doing in the body of Christ. We ought to be at peace among ourselves. And I would just say that exhortation we've seen in various ways in the one another is presented to us. But make sure, as the Bible says, that you have issues settled. There are issues that need to be settled with you and other Christians in the body of Christ, settle them. As Jesus said in Matthew chapter 5, certainly under the old covenant uh, arrangement on the way to go to bring your sacrifice to the temple, he says, if you know you have a gift and you're going to bring to the altar, you better first go and be reconciled to your brother even before you come and offer anything to God. You make peace offerings with God, you ought to make peace with your brothers and your sisters in Christ before you do that. Now, sometimes you can't, as we've seen in our one and others. As far as it depends on you, you ought to live at peace with other people, but you ought to make the effort, you ought to do what you can. Uh, I like to think of, as one guy always says, he's just you should make peace with people as though this were your last day. And I would think about that. If this were your last day, you knew this were your last day, you'd want to make sure that your relationships are right with each other. So good reminder for us from 1 Thessalonians chapter 5, verse, verse 13, to work today, to pray today, and to seek today to be at peace with each other.